Hi all, welcome to the Know How series in VLSI Design through Electronics Insight channel. In this video, we will clearly understand why NMOS passes strong 0 and PMOS passes strong 1 with specific examples. The basic prerequisite for understanding the working principle of either NMOS or PMOS transistor is the threshold voltage conditions for the transistor to turn on. The MOS transistor will turn on only when the applied gate to source voltage which we denote it as VGS is greater than or equal to the threshold voltage which is denoted by Vt. Where Vt is the threshold voltage, we define it in terms of the minimum voltage required for the transistor to turn on. Therefore, when Vgs is greater than or equal to Vt, the transistor turns on and behaves like a perfect closed state switch and passes the source input to the drain output terminal. Now let us understand the conditions for NMOS and PMOS to turn on. So let us write the conditions. For NMOS to turn on, for NMOS, it is going to be VGS greater than or equal to VTN. So, we denote the threshold voltage of NMOS in terms of VTN. And for PMOS, it is VSG greater than or equal to mod VTP. Where VTP is the threshold voltage of PMOS transistor. Here, we can observe that Instead of VGS for PMOS, we have written as VSG and the reason behind this writing as VSG is since source of PMOS is always at higher potential which is connected to VDD, we write source first and then the gate terminal next. Whereas in terms of NMOS, we know that source is at lower potential, source of NMOS is connected to ground terminal. So therefore, we write here as GS. And since PMOS, the source of PMOS is connected to always VDD higher potential. So, we write the voltage in terms of higher potential to lower potential. That is why here it is written as SG. And always the threshold voltage of PMOS will be in terms of negative. Therefore, we always consider as modulus of VTP. Now, let us start with the examples for NMOS transistor and understand how NMOS is passing strong 0 and weak 1. Now let us consider the gate voltage to be equal to the supply voltage VDD which is 5 volts. Also let us consider the threshold voltage of NMOS transistor to be 1 volt. The gate voltage and the threshold voltage of NMOS transistor are going to be fixed this is because when VGS is going to be, which means the gate voltage when it is going to be 0 volt, which we are going to consider this as a low input voltage. So, we very well know about the working principle of NMOS transistor, wherein the NMOS transistor will turn on only for a high input voltage. So, that is why we have considered 5 volt, where 5 volt is nothing but a high input voltage. When high input voltage is applied for an NMOS transistor, the transistor turns on. So here the transistor will remain off when VG is equal to 0 volt. So if it is an on state, it will behave perfectly like a closed state switch and it will allow whatever input is present at the source terminal to be obtained at the drain terminal. So now what we are going to do is we are just going to change the source voltage. Source voltage let Vs be equal to 0 volt. We are going to start with 0 volt so that we can check whether NMOS transistor 
can pass strong zero so now what we have to find out it can we'll have to find out vd for that we should check the condition for nmos transistor to turn on which is vgs should be either greater than or equal to vtn so how to find out vgs vgs can be written in terms of vg minus vs you know vg is 5 volts and vs is 0 volt so 5 minus 0 it will be 5 volt so vtn is 1 volt we have considered throughout the case therefore vgs is greater than vtn that is 5 volt is greater than 1 volt so therefore the nmos is in on state it behaves like a closed state switch so therefore it allows the source voltage to be completely available at the drain terminal which is going to be equal to 0 volt so with this we can say that the nmos has passed strong 0 so nmos is capable of passing strong 0 now let us find out the reasons for why it is not able to pass strong 1 now we will start with the second case so we always remember that gate voltage of nmos is going to be high vg is going to be retained as 5 volt and vtn is going to be 1 volt so we have just changed the source voltage alone in previous case we have seen that uh, vs was 0 volt now we have just increased the vs you can even increase from 0 1 2 you can solve n number of cases but to limit to only four cases to understand how it is passing strong 0 and weak 1 we have started with the next source voltage of 2 volt now we will as usual check the condition for the transistor to turn on so we'll find out vgs which is equal to again vg minus vs vg we know that it is going to be 5 volt and vs is 2 volt so it is going to be 3 volt we know vtn is 1 volt and here also we can conclude that vgs is greater than vtn therefore we say that my nmos is again in on state which is going to behave like a closed state switch so therefore my vd is going to get the same out input which is present at the source terminal which is going to be 2 volt now you can neither say it is going to be strong 1 or uh, strong 0 so let us proceed with the next case and then we will come to know how it is passing strong 0 now let us change the source voltage to 4 volts and find out what about our drain voltage so the condition that we will have to check is whether VGS is greater than or equal to VTN and first to find out VGS which is again VG minus VS VG we have considered as 5 volt and VS is 4 volt so this will be 1 volt and VTN we have considered as 1 volt so therefore VGS is equal to VTN which is both are at 1 volt so again for this when it is greater than or equal to condition itself the NMOS will turn on so my NMOS is again in on state so it will behave like a closed state switch therefore the output at drain side will be equivalent to VS which is 4 volt the exact source voltage will be passed to the drain side and now let us analyze what about this 4 volt this 4 volt is nothing but we can rewrite this 4 volt as VDD minus VTN which means VDD we know that it is 5 volt the supply voltage and threshold voltage we know that it is 1 volt so 5 minus 1 that will give you 4 volt so therefore VD is equal to 4 volt which means it is just 1 volt below the supply voltage vdd minus vtn now let us consider the last case wherein we are going to assume the source voltage as 5 volt which means from case 1 gradually we have increased from 0 volt to 2 volt and 4 volt and finally we have achieved 5 volt which is almost equivalent to vdd which is a high input voltage so which means this is going to be a 
strong one this is going to denote if this source voltage 5 volt has reached your drain terminal then you can say that nmos is capable of passing strong one but let we know very well that nmos cannot pass strong one it can pass only weak one and now we'll analyze what is that weak one means so now uh, as per the procedure we'll check out the condition which is vgs so vg minus vs vg we have already fixed that for nmos as high input voltage which is 5 volt 5 minus 5 volt will become 0 volt now we know that vtn is 1 volt so it is very well observed that vgs is less than vtn so which means my nmos will it turn on no the nmos will turn on only for the condition when vgs is greater than or equal to vtn so therefore nmos remains to be in off state so therefore it cannot pass the source voltage 5 volt to the drain side now the output drain terminal will retain the previous case value which is vd equal to 4 volt which we have seen it in terms of uh, vd is equal to vdd minus vtn so we call this as a threshold voltage drop problem so this one it is you call it as threshold voltage drop problem or you call it as a vt drop problem since vd is equal to 4 volt and it is not equal to 5 volt we cannot say that it is almost equivalent to strong one so that is why we call this as weak one that this because of this threshold voltage problem when you are applying a high input voltage at the source terminal as an input your drain will not allow a strong one to be passed rather it is only passing a voltage which is just less than one threshold voltage from the supply voltage which is not a strong one rather we call this as a weak one so that is the reason nmos is capable of passing weak one and a strong zero so therefore from case one we have understood that nmos is capable of passing strong zero and case four we have finalized that nmos can pass only weak one and not a strong one that is because of the threshold voltage drop problem in the nmos transistor the summary of all four cases for nmos transistor is shown here and case one depicting that nmos is capable of passing strong zero and case four depicting that nmos is capable of passing weak one is shown here completely now let us proceed to the same specific examples for pmos transistor so here what we are going to make it very fixed is the threshold voltage and the gate voltage for the pmos transistor so the gate voltage vg will be remaining as zero voltage as we know from the working principle of pmos we know that pmos will turn on only for a low input voltage so when a low input is applied your pmos will turn on if it is going to be vg is going to be 5 volt which is almost a high input voltage then the pmos will be in off state and pmos will be in on state and behaves like a closed state switch only when vg is equal to zero that is for in general it will turn on only for a low inputs now the second thing that we are going to fix is this threshold voltage of pmos transistor which will be minus one volt so here in condition for checking uh, pmos the condition is always pmos will turn on when vsg is greater than or equal to mod vtp so my mod vtp will become 1 volt and the reason for writing s in front of the gate terminal g is source will be always at higher potential for pmos transistor because source is going to be connected to vdd so we have written vsg of vgs now we will set vs is equal to 5 volt and we know vg is equal to 0 volt and mod vtp is equal to 1 volt therefore 
Vsg is equal to Vs minus Vg which is phi minus 0 equal to 5 volt. Therefore, Vsg is greater than mod Vtp that is 5 volt is greater than 1 volt. Therefore, the PMOS transistor is said to be in on state. So once it is in on state, it will behave like a closed state switch. So therefore, the input at the source terminal will be passed at the output drain terminal which is going to be equal to 5 volt. So therefore, the exact 5 volt has been passed at the drain terminal. This is why we call that PMOS is capable of passing strong 1. Now let us consider the second case wherein we are going to change only the Vs which is going to be 4 volt. Vg is going to remain as 0 volt for PMOS to turn on and mod Vtp we are going to consider as 1 volt. Now the condition for PMOS to turn on we are going to check in terms of Vsg, Vs minus Vg which is 4 minus 0 again it is going to pass 4 volt. 4 volt is greater than mod Vtp therefore PMOS is in on state and passes the source voltage to the drain which is 4 volt and here you cannot say that it is a strong one because it is not passing exact VDD 5 volts here now we will proceed to the third case here we are going to consider Vs is equal to 1 volt therefore my Vsg will be equal to Vs minus Vg which is 1 minus 0 which is again 1 volt wherein mod Vtp is also 1 volt so Vsg here it is equivalent to mod Vtp so in this case also my PMOS is in on state and it will pass Vd will actually have Vs equal to 1 volt now consider what is this 1 volt this 1 volt is nothing but our mod Vtp. So it is passing the threshold voltage mod Vtp and now we will proceed with the fourth case and understand why it is not capable of passing a strong 0. For the last case we are going to consider Vs is equal to 0 volt writing Vsg we will understand what is Vs minus Vg which is 0 volt and Vg is 0 volt for PMOS to turn on. So 0 minus 0 will be 0 volt and mod Vtp we know that it is going to be 1 volt. So here we can very well observe that Vsg is less than mod Vtp because 0 is less than 1. Therefore the PMOS is in off state and behaves like a open state switch which means it does not allow any input to pass to the drain output hence the drain output will retain the previously obtained voltage which was equivalent to 1 volt so in previous case we have seen that vd was equivalent to mod vtp so this mod vtp is nothing but this 1 volt so the same 1 volt will be retained at the output drain terminal when my Vs is going to be 0 volt. Since 1 volt is closer to 0 volt, we say that it can pass only weak 0 and not a strong 0. So this mod Vtp is again a threshold voltage drop problem and here we say that PMOS is capable of passing weak 0 and not a strong 0 because mod Vtp it is a 1 volt so this 1 volt cannot be called as a strong 0 it is nearer to 0 but it has not attained 0 so we call that as a weak 0. With this we conclude that from case 1 we have seen that PMOS is capable of passing strong 1 and with case 4 we observe that PMOS is capable of passing a weak 0. Here is the summary for both NMOS and PMOS transistor. And we can very well see that the gate and threshold voltages are fixed for both NMOS and PMOS transistor because only then the transistors will, corresponding transistors will turn on. 
and we have just varied the source voltages from 0 to VDD. I have written all these things in general. So, if Vs is 0 volt, the output drain voltage will be exactly 0 because of this only the NMOS can pass strong 0 and because of the threshold voltage drop problem in this NMOS pass transistor. So, Vs is VDD then your VD will be equivalent to VDD minus VTN. So, therefore, you cannot call this as a strong one. So, we say that NMOS is capable of passing weak one. And similar case with PMOS also, if VDD is passed, VDD is obtained because it is capable of passing strong one. And if VS is going to be 0 volt because of the threshold voltage drop problem, it cannot pass a strong 0 and it is passing only a weak 0. Hope the reasons are very clear. In the next video, let us continue with our learn before you solve session and know about the pass transistor logic and then solve the f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar problem using the pass transistor logic. Thank you all for watching the video through Electronics Insight channel.